911, what's your emergency? I'd like to know why the tornado siren's going off. It's not a test. It's not. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. 
cut with flying glass. Um, you could just feel the wind just blowing just dirt and different things into your face. And I think a stool or a chair flew across the room. And I remember thinking, I, I think I'm going to get hit in the face by a stool uh, flying really fast through the air. Um, and it, the guys in the bathroom just started screaming, everybody get in the bathroom. So we're diving in there. The lights were out, of course. Uh, some of the guys were bleeding. And so it was really, the whole experience has really been like watching a movie. It's like, it's not really happening. Uh, but we're all kind of holding the bathroom together and parts of the ceiling were falling down and my roommate Blake uh, prayed for all of us. And uh, once we felt like the, uh, the storm had passed, at least kind of the rocky part of it, we opened the door and we could you know, see out uh, into the night sky. So that was pretty scary. And I walked outside and saw the commons uh, just in complete rubble. I got the first word about the tornado that hit Union a little bit after seven o'clock on Tuesday night. The, my first call actually came from WBBJ that called me on my home telephone number to ask me uh, what was going on, that they had heard reports about a tornado that had hit campus and wanted to know what, what was happening. My TV was out, my, my telephone had been out, my cell phone had been out, so I had not gotten anything up until then. And so after I got off with them, I tried to uh, get through to somebody here on campus. I didn't have any luck. A few minutes later, BBJ called me back and told me that they had confirmed that there was a tornado that had hit campus and that there were people trapped in the dorms. And so I made my way over here to campus, got here probably about 7.15, between 7.15 and 7.30, and saw the destruction, saw the people running around, our students who were trying to rescue those who were, who were trapped in the dorms, and saw students that were, were digging their fellow students out. The emergency response people were already here firemen were here, police were here, and so from that point on, it's, uh, it was just a whirlwind. Uh, I was here on campus for about an hour or so. I went to the police station for most of the evening, the basement of the police station with, with Dr. Dockery. They set that up as kind of our, our command center. They wanted Dr. Dockery there and off campus where they could get a hold of him, where we could have somebody making decisions, and so I was there with him and stayed there until about 12.30, about 12.30 after we got the last person out of the dorms and got back to campus probably about one o'clock and was here uh, until six o'clock the following night, 6.30 the following night. So I was here for, uh, you know, all through the night and all the next day and have been dealing with the media calls. Uh, I figure by my estimation, I've received 24 hours after the, the tornado hit, I, I guess probably between 300 and 400 phone calls that, uh, from members of the media. CNN, Fox News, National CBS, National NBC, National ABC, uh, all calling, newspapers calling from all over the country to, to get updates about what had happened. And so it was pretty intense uh, for the, the, the first 24 hours after the storm. Uh, since then, we have uh, gone through various phases of uh, emergency and uh, getting everything secured and uh, trying to, to communicate to people what's going on getting our website updated and, and powered. We're, we've moved beyond a state of, emer of emergency into a state of, of recovery and rebuilding. And the last couple of days, we've had volunteers here on campus who are helping to clean up. Uh, we've had uh, crews here moving cars and, and towing cars off campus. We've had students returning to campus to get their belongings that have been, uh, that have been packed out of their dorm rooms for them. Some of the students have been able to go into their dorm rooms and get their own stuff. Some of the dorms have been so badly damaged that students, that we have uh, recovery teams that go in and, uh, and, and bag the possessions for the students and that some of them are coming back today to, to claim those. And so it's been an interesting week. We are thankful to the Lord for His protection over us. If you look around at the destruction here, it's hard to believe that there was not anybody killed. And not just that there was not anybody killed, but that, the, but that there weren't dozens of people killed. And the only explanation that we have for it is the fact that our residence life team did an excellent job of, of preparing our students and keeping them, up, them updated and following the procedures that they had in place. And also, uh, right along with that, hand in hand with that, is God's protection for us. Uh, the, the fact that, uh, that there wasn't anybody killed. We do have some people in the hospital. So we did have some people who had some serious injuries and we continue to be concerned about them, continue to lift them up and be in prayer for them. We don't, uh, we don't take their injuries lightly. Uh, we do take them very seriously and we are concerned for them. 
but at the same time, we are still thankful to the Lord that the damage here wasn't any worse than what it is. One of the RAs came in and told us there was a tornado warning and that we needed to go downstairs. So we all, um, I started out the door, but then I realized I'd left my cell phone. So I went back and grabbed it and I grabbed a book to read because I just thought we were going to be in the bathroom for a long time. And then we went downstairs and me and my roommate and one of our friends went um, in the room below us and then our other two roommates went to the room next door so there because there were already eight people in the room below ours and we all took our shoes off because we didn't just want because there were going to be nine eight or nine people in the bathroom and we got in the bathroom and we were all there were three people in the bathtub and I was sitting on the toilet and there was the other people were standing around and we were just standing there and we were kind of scared but not really bad because we didn't really think anything was going to happen and then um, we were just talking and hoping like classes would get canceled and then um, one of the girls told us to be quiet and it just got really quiet and it all happened so fast I don't even remember like my ears popping or what I heard I just remember a lot of noise and then the lights went out and then um, part of the roof flew off and I just remember that we all just got down and started crying and like praying and everything and we were just like hunched down covering our heads until um, someone came and they um, came to see if we were okay and then we told them everyone was fine and then um, we told them we didn't have any shoes so they just handed us a bunch of shoes and we um, when we opened when I opened the bathroom door I didn't expect it to look like that at all I didn't think that's what had gone on outside when we were in the bathroom the wall to the living room was gone and um, we had to climb over the couch to get out and I just remember it felt like we were like in a movie and I was just looking around in shock and they were telling us to go to one room where the wall hadn't come off. And I remember I called my mom and I was just like, you wouldn't believe what it looks like over here. And then they told us to run to White Hall because another storm was coming. So we were running and it was just like something off a of movie. We were hopping over the power lines and then they said to go to the PAC and um, because it would be safer there. So then we got there and that's when I realized how bad the damage really was. And I was talking to my dad on the phone and then um, he was talking and I heard like this woo sound like a train and I was like, uh, most people say that a tornado sounds like a train. So I was like, dad, 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 I have to let you go. And I like slammed my door really, my um, cell phone really fast and I opened the door and I was like, ladies, hurry, get in here. And there's a tornado coming. And I like pushed everyone in and then I like pushed all my weight up against the door and I could feel the wind like picking up really, really bad. And um, I was like, God, please please don't let this door open and I was just like pushing all my weight up against it and um, then all the lights turned out and the mirror over um, in the bathroom like busted all over us and everyone was like screaming and everything and then a rod that was um, about this big came through the bathroom and two girls were sitting on either side of the bathroom and then us two were sitting in the floor and so it turned out that no one got hurt by that plank but everyone was like hurry get it in and like put some towels in there so there's no more debris that comes in and everyone was just screaming and like the whole time I was pushing like with all my weight up against that door and I was like please do not let this door open God. The lights flickered and then they went off completely and um, I remember like crouching down and covering my head and then my ears popping, um, then just this huge loud noise and like part of the ceiling came off and a lot of dirt just swirled in around us and I just remember sitting there just um, like so afraid and praying that God would save our lives and um, then um, um, and we started like water just started pouring dent down on us and we thought it was rain um, or something or a pipe busted and we were just like what do we do now um, we don't think it's safe in here what do we do now and um, so finally we heard somebody outside asking if anybody was in the room and um, we were like yeah we're in here and they came and asked us if we had any shoes and we were like no we don't have any shoes and they said um, well we, there's a lot of glass so we got to find you some shoes and so they just started handing us like random shoes and just putting them on because we had to get out of there. They were saying there was another storm coming. And uh, so we opened, when I came out of the bathroom, I just saw like the front wall was completely gone from the room we were in. 
people are just all around yelling out names of people, trying to see if everyone's okay and out of the dorm rooms. Uh, and a girl, Jessica Nelson, is an RA over in Hurt, and she told me that Candace was in Blythe One with some other girls. Uh, there was like a tree that had fallen down, and the front part of that uh, building had just been ripped away, and so you could just see into the into the living room without any walls. And they were back in that bathroom, and um, so we went in there, and they opened the door, and there was six or seven girls in there, just kind of huddled together. Candace was trying to keep it together, I think, and, and keep everyone calmed down, and so we just tried to help them out uh, across all the rubble and debris and things over to the PAC where they were gathering everybody up. Uh, and then after that, just tried to find ways that we could help. Um, but mostly it was kind of a job for the professionals, the EMTs and emergency workers. And so uh, when it was kind of clear that we were just kind of in the way, we started making our way to the PAC where some, some people from the community started coming in and picking up people, taking them to their homes. Uh, a friend of ours, Matt Brunette, works here at the, at the director of the Wellness Center. Uh, took us to Kansas Cross Country Coach's house and uh, we just kind of spent the rest of the night there. Um, I actually had gone back into my room to get my cell phone. It was in a puddle of water. It had gotten knocked out of my hand during the storm. So I was finally able to get through to my parents um, and so to tell them I was all right. And uh, it's, it really was a miracle uh, that no one was killed and we're just really thankful uh, that the Lord did preserve us that night. The door opened for the wind because of the wind, so we were going to open uh, to close the door. And Matt said, "Oh, I get it, I get it." So I started coming back, and it, it just was like a big explosion, you know. They, I felt like you know there was like air coming out, like a suction, and then it just like a big explosion. So something hit me on the back. I have been saying that was, you know, the roof, but I guess probably was just God gave me a little pushing there. I have never been so afraid of my life because I thought that Isaac, my little boy, had been going right behind me. And, um, you know, that I started just, you know, calling for Isaac. And then my wife told me that they had, um, that he was fine with my little girl too. And um, yeah, they said, they are fine, they are fine, they are here. I took Sophia and Isaac at first and by that time a lot of the other students have already come and they were taking the the kids out and i tried to get matt and danny out but you know they were actually trapped so they couldn't they couldn't get out so that's when we wait um we wait for you know some students and to, to just tell them to leave by that time uh, I was just waiting for the fire department to come because we knew we could not reach them. So when the fire department came, I knew exactly what everybody was. So I, you know, guided them to where, you know, Danny and Matt were. So they started digging a little bit and they heard actually their voices. So I told them, you know, um, you know, just they're here. So then they started the whole excavation process or you know the digging rescue efforts and that took I don't know five hours on top of that of course started raining and it started just um, I mean it got bad and then the weather wanted to you know they said they were gonna come back again uh, maybe another worse tornado was coming or, or just bad weather so that would you know made it worse uh, we couldn't believe it I mean it was just a miracle you know God's hand hands God's grace over, you know, the whole school that nobody got killed, let's say, because some got hurt. But, I mean, if you see the pictures of what happened, it is truly a miracle. We're in the process of making decisions for the future. We've got a lot of significant decisions that have to be made about where, we're, where, where we are going forward. We've got decisions to be made about when classes are going to start, where students are going to be housed for the spring semester. And our top administrators are in the process right now of, of meeting and analyzing the different options and trying to choose the best option. Uh, these are not easy decisions to be made. and These are not decisions that you can make quickly and without serious consideration. And so uh, we are right now planning on returning, on, on students returning to campus the week of February the 18th. And we will make the, the necessary uh, adjustments that we need to make to uh, continue having school here at Union, Union University. And 
It will not look the same as it has in the past for some time, but uh, we will get through it and we will rebuild this campus. And we are confident that uh, months and years down the road that Union University is going to be a stronger place than what it's ever been. Uh, we are confident that God has something special in store for us. If God has, has brought us this far and if the Lord has protected us and uh, done a miraculous work in that sense, we have every reason to think that that, that benevolence is going to continue in the future and we're excited to see what that's going to look like. When things like this happen, uh, we naturally ask, uh, why, how does God uh, fit into this, what is God doing, does theology and thinking about God even matter? And the fact is that the Bible really does speak to these things. It doesn't give us an answer of why, even in the book of Job. Job is never told why, but what he has shown is that God is in control. God is working these things out. Like the Apostle Paul said, God is at work, working all things together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. So we may never know why all things happen, but we know that God is at work. And even in this, already we've seen the gospel going out through uh, media outlets and people hearing things they had not ever heard before, people being impacted for the gospel. And the Bible would encourage us to rest in the doctrine of providence, that God governs all things. These things did not surprise him. Um, we may not know exactly what the purpose is, but God is in control. And that gives us hope. We're not at the whim of just accidents in nature, but we know there is somebody intentionally guiding and directing these things. And so we persevere. We see in this the reality of the fall. Nature has fallen, things are not as they should be, and so we should long for the day when everything is made right. Again, in Paul's words in Romans 16, when the God of peace crushes Satan under our feet. When we see heaven and earth restored, um, this should cause us to long for those days.